everyone. Thank you for coming again once more. Uh, this is Haume. He's arrived at EBD in June. He came strictly from from Mexico, where he developed his his PhD thesis on interactions between plants and hummingbirds. Um, before that, he worked for five years with um, environmental education. Right after he finished his his degree and her, his master in Barcelona, that's where, he, where he's from. And well, apparently, Haum is in love with the tropics and with tropical birds yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he'll talk to us a little about that today so welcome Haume thank you very much thank you. for speaking thank you okay hello I'm going to talk about my thesis this is a brief resume about my the main results I get the name of this speech is the role of forbidden links and special store over in a understory plant hummingbird community this is not the original name of my thesis, but it was too long. Uh, only as a, as a background, as an interaction, uh, plant and animal species are integrated into a complex network of interdependencies forming ecological communities. Uh, in plant mutualistic networks, the animal provide the service of pollen transport in exchange of for tropic trophic resources produced by plants, usually nectar and pollen. But the most interesting thing is there are no random structural properties that promote a species coexistence and this is why uh, mutualistic, ne mutualistic networks are so interesting. Here I characterize the interaction network between hummingbirds and their floral resources in an understory community of the Lacandona rainforest of Mexico. I did it using four uh, main approaches. On the one hand, I study the morphology of the interacting traits among hummingbirds and their flowers in order to identify the forbidden links due to try mismatch. Forbidden links are links that are not realized because there are something wrong. In this case, difference between the bill of the hummingbird and the flower, for example. Also, I studied interactions. I studied the legit legitimate interactions, but also the illegitimate. The illegitimate interactions are interactions that are not mutualistic, when hummingbird act as a nectar rover. Later, I will show you some photos. But also, I study the network using the mutualistic network approach with metrics. I measure the floral rewards, the nectar, in order to relate the plant community with their visitors. And finally, I follow the phenology of the plants, but also I follow the spatiotemporal dynamics of hummingbirds in order to identify the species store over, over the year and the dynamics of the network. The study area was at the Chajul Biological Station, located in the southern part of the Montes Azul and Biosphere in Mexico. Here, really close to the Guatemalan border, only five kilometers. And field work, I carried the field work during two years at monthly interval. In fact, I wore almost over the two years because 50, 50 days all the mo all months and the main habitat is it was lowland evergreen tropical forest rainforest but it's a mosaic of different habitats this is the typical habitat of rainforests with difference in the understory cover but also i found food plate fluted plains rivers or streams uh, acahuales acahuales is uh, areas with secondary growth, and also savanna-like vegetation. That it, it's very interesting. Later, I will explain why. Uh, the main methods were species identification and phenology monitoring, focal observations to study the interactions, plant hummingbird interactions. This is why I refer about legitimate or illegitimate. In le legitimate interactions, hummingbird uh, when they, when Hamiver reach the nectar, they touch the, the 
stamens and still with the face or the beak, but in illegitimate interactions, hummingbird usually pierce the base of the flower and it's an antagonistic relationship. I measured the corolla length and curvature and I did the same with the bill of hummingbirds and I took nectar, nectar measure, measurements to identify the quantity and the quality of, this, of each flower. This is some photos from my thesis. It's how I, put, how I registered, how I did the focal observations. Most observations were done by video recording with five GoPros. I didn't have any field assistants. Then five GoPros are five field assistants. Uh, it was a very useful tool in order to, to identify all the interactions due to the, the good quality of the image, in order to see if the hummingbird touch the reproductive, the reproductive parts of the flowers, or, I mean, to me, I really love this methodology. To get the nectar, I bagged the flowers one day before, before the flowers were opened, and the day later, I will extract the nectar. And here, how to measure the corollas using the caliper and the curvature. For example, here I have two curvature of flowers and the length of the bill and the flower and the curvature were the same. It's very interesting how in, in this ecosystem everything is very, the relationships are very specialized. And I'm going to divide the, this speech into three main parts. This the first part, this is the name of the first, the first article I, I published. The name is Forbidden Links, Trade Matching and Modularity in Plant Hummingbird Network, are specialized models characterized by higher phenotypic floral integration. Here I'm going to talk about the morphology as a possible network constraint. In the second part, I'm going to talk about the spatiotemporal dynamics of the web, of the network, and finally, I'm going to talk about the illegitimate visitations. Hummingbird as a antagonistic, antagonistic uh, organisms and not a mutualistic. That usually people only think that hummingbirds are mutualistic, uh, only have mutualistic relationship, but this is not true. Here, I analyzed the structure of the plant hummingbird mutualistic network using network metrics inside the network theory approach. Uh, I studied the role of morphological constraints, usually considered forbidden links, in the network. And finally, I link network morphological specialization, modularity of the network, and phenotypic floral integration. The phenotypic floral integration, it's not very, I mean, the phenotypic, of phenotypic floral integration is uh, the magnitude and the pattern of variation and covariation of floral, of floral traits. Of, of floral traits. I mean, uh, pollinators have some pressures, pressures, selective pressure in flowers. Then, how the flower arrange and modify their, their traits in order, in order to these traits become as functional units. I mean, it's different to explain, but it's the way how the plant arrange the floral traits for, to be specialized for one visitor or pollinator. Later, I will explain in Spanish if <laughs> for more details. Uh, I did it. 677 hours focal observation, totally. I registered only, only because the tax, the visit taxa, it was very, very slow, very, it's, I mean, in the jungle, you have to spend a lot of time to see interactions. 3,403, th 3, 403 legitimate visits and 135 legitimate visits. The plant assemblage, one composed by 70 plant species, 
And I only identified seven hummingbird species in two years. And only four species were involved in legitimate interaction, and three only involved in illegitimate interactions as nectar rovers. Then hummingbirds are good pollinator, but they are they are not only pollinator. They are also parasites, or I don't know the name, but the relationship is not always uh, mutualistic. There are two two figures. Here, uh, finally, I identify, I identify two main habitats differentiated by the plant composition. This is the typical rainforest habitat with plants belonging to, to its habitat, but the savanna habitat was completely different in terms of plant species. About, I didn't have any, any species that shared both habitats. But the most interesting thing that despite uh, the plant species were different, the same species were the main visitors in both habitats, forming a single interaction, interaction network. No. And also I found a strong trait matching between two hermit species. Hermit species are very specialized uh, hummingbirds, usually from the genus Phytornis, Phytornis longirostris and Phytornis tribularis, and plant belongs to the genus Acanthacea, Bromeliaceae, Costacea, Liconiaceae, and Rubiaceae. Here is the same Phytornis longirostris, this is a Bromelia, uh, this is Bilbergia viridiflora, and two Heliconias, Heliconia orantiaca and Heliconia, uh, this is Wagneriana. The three plants, the three flowers, show the same length and the same curvature. However, the place where plants put the pollen in the head of the hummingbird were different. Then, plants, it's a kind of facilis, facilitation and not com competition between plants. That is very interesting. They have the same visitor, then it's good because there are more available availability of flowers to the hummingbird, but plants do not compete with the, the position of, of the pollen. Here I show the, the, whole net, the whole network with the rainforest and the savanna habitat, and this is only the rainforest, and uh, this is only the savanna. The hummingbird species were the same in the rainforest and the savanna. However, the main role were different. In the savanna, Phytorne longirostris was the main visitor, while in the, in the savanna, it was not important. However, Phytorne strigularis was most in, more important in the savanna habitat. This is the main difference, but also it's important to see the asymmetric relationship of interdependencies. Why? Because despite the two phytornis show a very specialized bill, they are in fact generalists because they have lot, a, a, a big variety of, of food. It's, it's not a specialized relationship. However, their plants show a specialization for only one hummingbird species. Then, I found that 73 of the plant species recorded in, in this study were visited only by one hummingbird species. This is really interesting. And, and yeah, the rainforest and the savanna network show difference in their structure and the relative roles of hummingbirds. I found three main modules in my network. One module formed by the two generalist species with short and stretched bills, uh, Amazilia tsacatl and Chlorestes candida. Another formed only by this hummingbird and, and their flowers, and this, humming, this hummingbird species and its flowers. Uh, when about the floral phenotypic integration, I found that Okay, in specialized models, the floral integration was high, higher, but not significant, significantly higher. Then, specialized plants 
uh, did not show higher floral integration, but my network, my network was very poor in the number of, of species, probably with more data, uh, results will be clearer, I don't know, but with my data, I have the tendency, but it's not significant. Significant. The second part is the influence of, of plant phenology and floral morphology on the spatiotemporal dynamics of a hummingbird community in the Lacandona Rainforest, Mexico. Here, I investigate the mechanisms and process involved in the structure of the interaction network over time. Why? Because usually interaction, interaction networks are seen as static entities, as I showed in the before. You have the whole plan. However, in, uh, interaction networks change all the time with species and the, yes, addition and deletion of, of a species or reassembly of interactions. Then I study these, these dynamics, I identify the main drivers of plant hummingbird interactions and I determine the impact of nectar rovers and or thieves on the dynamics, dynamics and structure of the, monthly, of the monthly network. I mean, if the antagonistic relationships have some impacts in the network. Uh, I summarized the two years of study into one year, uh, adding all the flowering species it identified each month. And then this is the whole year, the plant species. This is the dry season, the rainy season. In green, plants belonging from the, to the rainforest habitat. And purple, plants belonging to the savanna habitat. And I found a sequential flowering, flowering pattern of the plant assemblage. What it means? In the rainforest, everything is very... Uh, what's the name? Ordenado. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how these plants, uh, you can find some peaks at the end of the dry season, at the beginning of the rainy season, but there are food all the time. And what's about the hummingbird? Despite the four legitimate visitors, the four hummingbirds stay in the area all the year, I've, I found that some species only were recorded in the savanna, in the savanna habitat during here or here, and here visit the rainforest and the savanna. It's amazing because the savanna and the rainforest it, it are two adjacent habitats. I mean, it's only, it's not, you, you can see the difference with your eyes, but some months, during some months, hummingbirds only stay in one habitat. However, they need this habitat to stay all the year. That's, that it's interesting. And some months in the rainy season, uh, there are presence of nectar rovers, probably because there are some months with more plant species. What's about the, the networks? I analyze the monthly networks. Uh, the Black dots are the hummingbird species. Pink dots, plants belonging from the, from the savanna habitat and rainforest habitat. In red are illegitimate interactions. What's important to see here? That monthly networks change a lot. There are some months, for example, at the end of the rainy season and at the end of the dry season that the network is very poor in species. And some months, June, July, August, they are more complex. Then I found that plant turnover is the main, is the main network, network, I mean, change in the network are due mainly to the change in the plant species composition and the addition of some hummingbirds, the nectar rovers during these years, during these months. It's important because usually networks are threatened at static entities, but no. Well, I am not going to explain this whole table, but it's important to see that each column is one month. 
there are a lot of changes in the plant especially in the plant uh, assemblage. However, for one metric is one network matrix is connectance. The value is almost the same all month, despite the continuous changes. No? Why? Probably constant flower availability and the permanence of shared floral plants that share in their floral morphologies promote network stability. Despite the plants are all the time different, functionally as is the same flower. Then for the whole network, is, there are some stability. This is why even in nestedness or specialization, the values are constant. What's about the drivers of interactions? I found that plant hummingbird interaction network was a interaction was best explained by the phenological overlap of the interacting species. Uh, this is and uh, this is the whole network. You taking into account legitimate and illegitimate and the two habitats, the whole network only in the in the rainforest in the savanna, and here only the legitimate network. Network. The interesting thing is that illegitimate visitors did not affect the main drivers of interaction. I mean, the role of these parasites or the antagonists don't have. Uh, a big role in the stability of the whole network. And abundance of the species is one of the worst predictors of interactions. Abundance, for example, abundance is here, here. Why? In specialized re network relationships, abundance is not important. Probably in plant insects, network is more important because the probability of be visited is correlated with the abundance of one species, of the one pollinator. But in this case, the, uh, the trait match is, very, is, very, is more important than abundance. You have, to, you, you have to have the possibility to get to the nectar. Then it's, it's in, I mean, it, this is not new. All the words say the same, but this is a way to corroborate this. Finally, I'm going to talk about nectar robbery by hummingbird. Uh, the, no, the title is nectar robbery by hummingbird is triggered when morphological well matches, matches flowers are scarce. Here, on the one hand, I report the illegit illegitimate interaction in the plant hummingbird in the context of the interaction network. Why in the context? Because usually illegitimate interactions are studied separately because they are not mutualistic relationships. It's only one plant a species, one hummingbird species, what happens, but not in the context of the whole network. And finally, I characterize the association between the cheating behavior and the floral traits and availability of flora in the study area. Usually, the main theory is that hummingbird drop flowers, uh, access to flower illegitimate, illegitimately as an opportunistic way to get more resources. They are clever and they know how to access even with a short bill. However, when I was in the jungle, in the rainforest, I saw a different, a different pattern. Then I wanted to study deeply this, the illegitimate interactions. I found that six hummingbird species, six out of seven hummingbird species were involved in illegitimate visits. I found that three species, Antracotorax prevosti, Eliotrex berroti, and Ferrocoracuberi, were only recorded as nectar rover during two years. And I, find, I found five out of 70, 77, no, 27 plant species were visited illegitimately, illegitimately <laughs> And in some plant species, the plant, the percentage of nectar robbery were one third of the total visit here. 26, 31, I mean, the, the, the taxa was high. 
to illustrate with the, this is photos taken from my video recordings. Uh, Eritrina Folkersi, Eliconia Orantiaca, Eliconia uh, Collinsiana, Justicia Aurea, Amal Laviscus Arboreus. Here the illegitimate interaction and here the legitimate interaction, always by the same hummingbird species, the most specialized species, Phytorni longirostris. Then alpine species whose flowers were robbed had long curved corollas. No? and legitim and Phytorni longirostris as the only legitimate visitor. And most nectar robbery were made by piercing the base of the corolla. Here you can see how they access to the nectar. However, uh, mutualistic or to I mean to be a mutualistic or to be a parasite or the antagonistic relationship is not clear. For example, in this case, Chlorestes candida. This is a hummingbird with a short bill for this flower. However, sometimes this hummingbird gets some drops of nectar and, they, and then they touch the stamens. Then it's a potential pollinator, probably, despite the mismatch between the, their traits. Or in this plant, this is Passiflora rubirosae, is usually visited legitimately by one bumblebee. Despite the flower is open and the nectar is available, this hummingbird gets the nectar with a curvature that don't touch the stamens. Then it's a pollination. I don't know. Sometimes it's not, it's not easy to identify the kind of interactions. Well, in order to, to study deeply uh, about the illegitimate interactions, I measure all the corollas, the corolla range of flowers available in both habitats, green rainforest and orange savanna, each month. Um, and this, the dashed lines are the measure, the bill length of each hummingbird species in the area. Phytoni longirostris, this is the most specialized hummingbird. First of all, I didn't record any illegit illegitimate interaction in the savanna habitat. Why? Probably because always the corollas were smaller or equal than the bill length. Then it's not necessary to rob one flower if you can access. However, in the rainforest, it's different. The average corolla length were higher than the big length. The only hummingbird that can access to these flowers is Phytorni longirostris. And another thing that I can explain is why the average change, this is the, the end of the dry season at the beginning of the rainy season. I don't know why, here the corollas are, the average are different. I, I want to study deeply to identify why. This is probably, this is the dry season and I, I don't know, but there are some changes. Uh, despite Phytornis stribularis is the second more specialized hummingbird, in the savanna is the most specialized hummingbird, uh, is also the, the hummingbird that I recorded more robbery. It's the main robber, it's the main cheater. It's very specialized, but also the main cheater. And I study why, why this, is, this hummingbird have the two phases. First of all, I did the same with the corollas, they fit all the year. Here I measure the corollas of flowers they get by usually using the mutualistic relationship entered by the, by the main entrance. And here the corollas of plants they rob, this hummingbird rob. And I found one interesting thing that in months 
where the range of the Corollas available are greater, are, yes, are, are more Corollas, the rope is not necessary. However, in months when there was only or two plant species, they started to visit illegitimately more Corollas. Then, to me, this is not an opportunistic way. It's probably if his hummingbird wants to stay in this habitat, have to change the way they access. Finally, I, I, obtain, I obtain a significant negative relationship between the number of plant species visited legitimate, legitimately and those visited illegitimately. I mean, explaining the thing I said now. However, when I relate the number of illegitimate visit, I mean being a parasite, with the availability of long tubed, tubed corollas, I mean, if you have more, more corollas, more flowers, you can rob more. However, I did not find any relationship. The relationship was more related with the absence of short corollas. No? Finally, the results suggest that the cheating behavior could be explained as a search for secondary trophic resources when legitimately attainable resources are scarce. Are scarce. These are my, the main findings. Only final considerations. Pollination networks are complex, involve diverse groups of pollinators and are very dynamic over time. Then, this is only the, only the tip of the iceberg. What happens with the, in the rest of the layers, for example, in the canopy? My community is connected, is not connected, probably is connected with the, with the, the other layer. No? We have to have a broader view of communities, interaction networks, and natural history. Uh, networks are important, but it's like a model. It's only, you can see only one part, but what happens with all species, with the rest, no? And what's about the real role of hummingbird as pollination? I only identify visits, but I don't know the role of each hummingbird in each plant, the, the impact of its visit in the set production, no? I have to have exclusion experiments to identify the main pollinator, and I have, I have to have pollination treatments. And finally, my study network is composed by a few species, 27 plant species, and only four uh, legitimate visitors, or seven hummingbirds in to totally. Then I have to take the results and infer patterns with Cation. Uh, I have some videos about my focal observations. Here, for example, is Calatea, Luz, Calatea lutea. Calatea is visited by hummingbirds. However, this bee is the, responsibi the responsibility of open the floor. Then the hummingbird, it's a visitor, it's a pollinator, I don't know. This is, this is a very big bromelia, Chlorestes candida, this is the savanna habitat. A ver. Chlorestes candida again. This is a big heliconia, however, short bill hummingbird can access to its flowers, but in a very um, sophisticated way. I mean, the plant, uh, hummingbirds have to, ¿cómo se dice? to change the, their position. I mean, it's not easy. However, this plant is very common and is very visited by, by hummingbirds. This is the savanna habitat, Achmea bracteata. Uh, this flower show the typical generalized, is half short corollas, then is visited by all species. This is a very big bromelia, and an special bromelia because it's uh, dimorphic. I mean, males and females are in different, different individuals. Ah, 
This is nectar robbery. This is Heliotrix barrotti in Heliconia, Heliconia collinsiana. Look how this hummingbird get the nectar. In fact, this hummingbird is a specialized parasite. I mean, in uh, mutualistic relationships are very rare. This is Passiflora ruby rosae and the main visitor. Look, this bumblebee is full of nectar, the, full of pollen. And it's very interesting the way. However, this flower is also visited by hummingbirds. But the role of hummingbirds as a pollinator of this species. Later, I have a video of a hummingbird visit. Ah, now, look. They get the nectar, however, they don't touch the stamens. Then, this is a legitimate or illegitimate visit. This is a nectar thief because they access to the nectar in a passive way with no tissue that damaging them. There are some monkeys at the background. How learn? Ah, and this species is very interesting. It is Bilberge viridiflora. I only found two individuals during two years in the whole, in six kilometers of, of area. And the flowers are green, are very Unconspicuous, however, show a perfect thread matching. Look, with with this hummingbird, and have lots of nectar. And another interesting thing about this species is the flower; it's open for two days. However, only have nectar the first day. This is why he tried to get nectar from this, but he only found nectar in this first flower. Ah, this is Costus pictus. This is a strange Costus because share a, a morphology to be pollinated by hummingbirds, but also for insects. And the hummingbird I, I'm not sure about if this hummingbird uh, pollinate or not poll because they access to the flower. However, this doesn't no have some problems. <laughs> <laughs> it's too weak. Look, the the GoPro, the GoPro is perfect. He's trying to keep calm, keep calm. Ah. He try again. I think this hummingbird gets nectar. However, the it's not. Mm, ah, in this flower is perfect. The trade matching here is ah, this is the flower I show you before, and despite this flower have long corollas, the access it has some difficulties in access to these flowers. I don't know why. Probably they do the curvature, and this is a trade matching, the trade mid match. Sorry. Finally, he get, this hummingbird gets the nectar, but not, it's not easy. And the same, no? It's the same. Ah! 
This is very special plant. It's Heliconia wagneriana because it's the only Heliconia, at, at least I know, that the hummingbird is the responsible, the responsible of open the flower. The flower is closed and the hummingbird has to open the flower. Look this flower now, how the flower is. And at the end of the video, you can see the difference of how the stamens are more much larger. This heliconia is really, really big. Now I'm going to show you the... Look, this, this flower. Can you see the difference? At the end, the stamens are rolling inside the flower and they need the hummingbird. In this case, the same. They ah, this is Justicia Aurea, and this plant show trade uh, a nice trade matching with Phytornis estrigular, uh, Phytornis longirostris. You can see how the pollen placement is perfect. This is Malvaviscus arboreus also. Ah, look, this bee and the... This is probably the main pollinator of this plant. It's not the hummingbird. However, both pollinators, both pollinators act at the same time. The bees inside of the flower. But I, I'm not sure about this species. Is specialized in hummingbirds or because share both syndromes. I mean, and now the bee, yeah, <laughs> the bees. <laughs> and this is really nice bromeliad. I only have five records of visits, despite this, this bromeliad is very. Very para, para colibri, I mean, very to hummingbird, but it was a, a, a rare species. Ah, this is the plan I showed you at the at the beginning. Hummingbird visit the flower, but probably the it it's not a pollinator, and sometimes there are many pollinators at the same time. Butterflies, bees, hummingbirds. It's a party. And this is a plant with that, despite it's very big and flowers looks uh, with a generalist syndrome, it's were only visited by this species. This is the savanna. Look the difference of the habitat. The savanna is completely different. And uh, this is a Tilansia streptophila. Ah, this is the illegitimate interaction. How this hummingbird, despite the trade mismatch, get the nectar? And the plant I showed you before, and here is he wants more. I don't know if, if it's the last video. Ah, 
Ah, yeah. Now it's the same. Yeah. Uh, to sum things up, uh, hummingbirds are pollinators, but there are also antagonists, and it's very complex sometimes to identify the real role. If you don't, you have to do a lot of experiments, first of all, to know if this plant needs a pollination, need a pollinator, because probably this plant is self compatible, compatible and that doesn't need pollinator. And what's the impact of, of this bee, of this hummingbird, in the set production. This is why, okay, I recorded visits, but I can't say if it's a good pollinator. If not, I need more, more, more data and to study each case with, with Cation. And that's all, okay. Yes. <laughs> So, so sorry for my English in Spanish. I can, I can say better. <laughs> Thank you very much, Hamid. That was great, and your videos are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> we have time for questions. So, Raúl. Hello. Thank you. Um, have you found um, a lot of um, strict, specific interactions? Like between one plant species and one hummingbird species? Yes, the 73 of all the plant assemblage was, were, was visited only by one hummingbird species. Yeah, but mm, you didn't found um, you didn't find a hummingbird species only visiting one plant species. No. Right? Okay. And did you find any kind of relationship or taxonomical relationship? between the plants visited by only one hummingbird? There are some genus, for example, Heliconias, uh, Costaceas, that are more specialized, depends mm. on hummingbirds. However, the interesting thing to see here is how different plants share in their morphologies and to get be visited by only one hummingbird species. There are some species, yes, Heliconias, the relationship, even if you see the, the two phylogenies, mm -hmm. they are correlated. However, it's interesting how they, even in phylogenetically distant species, they share the same morphology. Okay, thank you. Mm. Have you thought about integrating the two types of interactions within the same framework, the mutualistic and antagonistic ones. I For want example, to do, yeah. You can have like a tripartite network. So yeah. you have three hummingbirds that interact antagonistically with some plants, which mm. is the layer in the middle, and then the other four hummingbirds that interact only mutualistically with the plants now. And then you can see whether the hummingbird that Roberts yeah. nectar is, or Roberts nectar from the plant that is yeah. visited by many of the hummingbirds that yeah. interact mutualistically. Yeah, because this right? is a tripartite network, yeah. Because the relationships, it's a feedback, yeah. I, I want to, uh, I will do. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. thank you for your talk uh, and your wonderful Colibri video shot. It has been <laughs> impressive. Well, uh, you haven't mentioned, but uh, and I'm not sure of my question anyway, but uh, is there any possibility of the interspecific interaction and competition between the hummingbirds, especially for those that have uh, similar, uh, similar bill length I think there are five species, yeah. and considering that hummingbirds are very territorial, yeah. and so I don't know if interspecific competition may have yeah. a role. In uh, hummingbirds have two ways to get flowers. To be specialized, I mean, if you are 
a specialized hummingbird, you have your own trophic year resort, uh, floral resort for you. I mean, because, because you, it, you are the only species to access to one flower. However, if you share the same bill morphology with another hummingbird, then the ter territoriality is the way how they access to these flowers. In the savanna, in the savanna habitat, I, I, sorry. In the savanna habitat, I saw that these two species don't, doesn't have any specialization. Then here they become territorialist. Then there is a hierarchia. And I found many fights with these two species to get the same resource. In the case of specialization, I didn't find any, any antagonistic interaction because they only can access to one resource. Hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for your talk. It was really interesting for me. Um, we have many common points. I wanted to know in this graph exactly how were you including the forbidden links? Because I'm not sure about that. How? Were you including the forbidden links? How? Yes, because you said they were forbidden links. Yeah. So are you calculating the rate of forbidden links of the total network? Uh, I have many tables that I didn't put here, sure, but sure. I identify the forbidden links a straight mismatch and identify later with the modules. I mean, because here the forbidden links are clear because you have a bill equal or almost equal to this flower or sometimes it's difficult. However, I have the problem that this hummingbird can access to flowers er smaller with a small corolla than its bill. Then there is straight match, however, this hummingbird can access to flowers with small, smaller corollas. But I don't know if but do you have analysis. Do you have an estimate of how many links were not taking place because there was a mismatch, morphological mismatch? No. You didn't can quantify that? No. Because you can do that. You can do, the whole, you can do the whole network and see how many links are not taking place because they are not there is not a, mis a match between the size of the corolla and the and the bill length. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you have you, because you you were saying the name the yeah. number the you were saying this is a forbidden link yeah. because there is not a trait match, right? But then, so that it doesn't need to appear in the network here, right? Hmm. So you can estimate how many links were not appearing because there was a morphological mismatch. Yes, I did, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Modelos, modelos nulos, uh, null models, and many, many words. However, in this case, forbidden links are quite clear because the interactions are very specific. Okay, okay. However, I didn't analyze this, this network without these two species of, because in this case, I analyze, I quantify the nectar, I quantify the bill, the curvature, and this is how I identify the, the trade matching. Okay, yeah. thank you. No one else? Last chance? Okay. Thank you for this very interesting and nice presentation. Mm, so do you think that there is also, um, well, that there is fidelity um, between um, hummingbirds and specific plants? I'm talking about the same species but different individuals. Because you mentioned that, there is a, uh, ter that they are territorial, so I wonder whether they are individuals from some species that always go to the same patch and to the same species. Uh, Even at the end, the species visit lots of, the b hummingbird if visits lots of If it's the same plants. hummingbird individual defending the mm, patch, mm -hmm. I, c I can identify the different individuals. However, when you have one hour of observation, 
you can see that it's the same because you can see the same individual perched in the nearest branch, then it's the same all the time visiting, uh, defending the same patch. However, I don't know if every day it's the same, but at least in the same, at the same day, it's the same individual. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question actually. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering because at some point you showed that there were some um, for some species there were no interactions at certain months months hmm. right? Um, do you know if these species were present in the area or if they moved to some other area? I have two theories. One theory is. The main nectar rover show, show it uh, short bills and more adapted to flowers in the canopy, the canopy flowers. Then probably they, are on, they only visit the understory only as a supplemental resources, but probably they live in the canopy all the year round. Another thing is that they can migrate. However, this rainforest is very huge and they are specialized say, specialized in the rainforest but probably I think that they only go to the understory to get more resources and the rest of the years is are in the canopy this this is why I want I would like to to see what happens in the in the whole network in the whole uh, layer so you are not absolutely sure if they were there the whole year or not no no okay Thank no you. because the canopy it's <laughs> okay, uh, no one else? Then thank you all for coming and especially you. <laughs> thank you. And yeah, we're done for today. Thanks. <laughs>